I don't have 20 roaches in the corner like you're. <laughs> Everybody else was rich, wealthy, comfortable. And here I am in this house on the middle of the block with roaches and fail mice. I'm always going to tell the truth. You feel me? That's one thing I'm going to do. Sends me a water bell. The water bell was damn near. I really wanted to sue them too because I got so much pictures and evidence. I wonder if it's too late. I wonder if it's too late. The slum lords in South Carolina. Baby, if you even thinking about moving to South Carolina, just don't do it. Don't do it. Cheers. The motherfucking tea. All right, so let me tell you the tea, right? Spill the tea. What the? Spill the tea, sis. Hey beauties, welcome and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're not new here, hey girl, hey, how you doing? How you been? Where you from? Where you at? So before we get into the video, let's, yes, let's just hurry up and address the elephant in the room, y'all. Yes, I am bullheaded again. Why? No, y'all is not seeing the old clip of me. This is the Charisma right now, March, whatever date it is. What date is it? March 8th. This is the Charisma, okay? I know y'all loved me with the hair. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hair was so pretty. It grew so long. Whatever. I wanted to be bald headed. I like to get in tune with my facial features. I like to see exactly how big my neck is to know how much I need to lose on the neck area. Why would she say that? Like. <laughs> then you get my drift. But yeah, enough with that. Hey, beauties. So today's video is sponsored by Harness. Harness is a luxury furniture brand with a focus on aesthetics. They offer all things furniture-wise, such as dresses, vanities, dining tables, nightstands, and so much more. Let's get into what they sent me today. So first thing first, the shipping was super fast. I literally signed my paperwork with them, received the email, and in three days, FedEx was dropping us off at my front doorstep. Shout out to Harness though, because y'all know I just moved. I was trying to figure out what to put on this wall, how to decorate it, what furniture to put, and they reached out to me. So this is what I picked from them. I did pick a two-piece black velvet chair set. One important thing that I wanted to point out, please make sure you're checking the box because I was about to throw away the screws that go with the chairs. Oh my God, I would have been so mad. But yeah, make sure you're checking because it is a big box. So next we have the instruction manual. The instructions were so simple and super easy to put together. So my daughter's gonna rip the plastic off and I'm gonna show you what I did because the box did come with a lot of foam in it which got on the velvet chairs. So you know, if you got a Dollar Tree around you, yep, I went and got me a lint roller. I already had it in the house so I ain't had to leave. And we just rolled it off there and it came right off, so yeah. Now to put together, it was super easy. It came with four screws, were really eight because it's two chairs, but you put four on one, four on the other. The holes lined up perfectly. It was super fast. The instruction said it would take between three and 10 minutes. It literally took us about five minutes. So once again, the instructions were super, super easy. You put the screws in and then you screw it in with the Allen key and boom, you got you some nice, cute velvet chairs. So it's your honest opinion of the chairs? Um, they're good. I like them. I think they're comfy. And so now I'll be sitting there when I come to the kitchen because I don't really like sitting at the table most of the time. What kind of vibes they give you? It gives me like, like podcasts. Like, you got tea time. Or beauty so, so, so. Okay. okay. Yeah, beauty salon. You gotta sit in the chairs. So you heard it here first. The chairs were 10 out of 10. I love it. I just put a little cute little background. I will probably go back to it later, try to decorate it more. Thank you, Harness, for sponsoring this video. Beauties, if you're interested, use my discount code, Cariz, that's C-H-A-R-I-S, for 15% off site-wide. Thank you.
let's get straight into the story time because I know y'all been waiting. So, boom, y'all. The decisions that we make today can and will affect us tomorrow, y'all. Every decision that we made when we was a teenager, when we was in our early 20s, baby, it's coming back to bite us in the ass okay and I'm in the perfect example of that so let me tell y'all the slum lords in South Carolina baby if you even thinking about moving to South Carolina just don't do it don't do it don't do it I mean do it if you got some money yeah do it if you got a good savings do it if your credit score is a one do it like that but don't do it if you basically low income or you on any program you got housing section eight it, they don't mess with us out here they don't mess with us out here so for the new ones who's here y'all know i got section eight okay my grandmother had died i was living with her so they made me to you know everybody know that story am i ashamed of it no um do i care not really do i want to section eight nope i actually hate it and they treat us like the bottom of the barrel okay they treat us like garbage like trash and the places that they rent to us especially in south carolina it's horrible it's so horrible but i put all of this on me because i messed up in the past and i did things that i'm not proud of and yeah i'm here to tell y'all everything today so y'all don't make these same decisions going forward in life okay so listen y'all so boom y'all know i moved out here south carolina i came from new york moved to south carolina it was april 2017 so y'all know i was living with my aunt misery if y'all don't know who misery is i got a story time on her y'all can go check it out but do y'all really need the whole backstory for this one not really but yeah i was living with my aunt misery you know it was given she was given what her name was i wanted to get up out of her house real fast like real fast i did not want to be there the rules was crazy the way she talk to me was even crazier it just wasn't giving that so i was really trying to get up out of there so when i came down here i was originally living in new york i was living in staten island now when i left staten island i had an eviction on my record okay now if you go check the public records now it's no longer on there so the eviction was for possession of the home okay i was waiting for new york to transfer my voucher to the south so i can come search for houses in the south new york was taking a sweet time it was like a whole month i had to go to court he gave me some time to wait i waited but then the time was up he just wanted repossession on the court paper it says zero dollars i owe zero dollars i think i still have that court paper i put a screenshot because you know i'm always dropping receipts like nothing to lie about so it was zero dollars meaning the eviction was not supposed to be a threat to me it was not supposed to hinder me or anything from being able to rent in a whole nother state because i paid all the rent it was nothing like that he just wanted the house girl you can go wait somewhere else hence that's why i went to the shelter to wait Okay, I told y'all I was staying at Baby D mother house. Yeah, I had too many kids. I just, it was uncomfortable. So I went and stayed in a shelter and I waited for them to transfer the voucher here, which took probably about two weeks. And then I came to the South. Now, when I got to the South, like I said, I was living with my aunt Misery. I was working at the job Adidas. At this time, it's not like this now, but at this time, there was 12 hour shifts. And immediately when we got here, I started working in four days. We started looking for apartments, searching for everywhere. We put in tons of application, which which is me and my aunt misery we put in tons of applications to move tons of applications for me to get a crib and everybody was no no first of all i didn't have any credit i didn't even know nothing about credit before i moved to the south are you not ashamed of yourself so my credit was like three lines it was non-existent it was nothing it, it, it was nothing and um yeah they said no credit is bad is worse than actually having bad credit which is dumb because if i don't got no credit that mean that i'm good right like but whatever but i would think all of them damn bills i paid in new york i would have a credit beat why the rent the the lights everything we pay is not going on our credit score but as soon as we do not pay oh that that joint going on our credit it's going right yeah yeah but anyway 
so like i said we're looking for places i'm getting denied they talking about the eviction now they want me to give them the eviction paper i give them the eviction paper and a lot of them still said no and some of them was like yeah but your credit score need to be this and you need to work on this and you need to do that so it was hard to try to find places so this one place that we found this was the first house that i ever lived in in the south my aunt knew about south carolina because she'd been living here for a while so she took me over to this management company i'm not going to say the name but but anyway she took me to this management company they said is a house coming up go see the house the people was moving out okay that's not a weird thing in the south when they say hey go view the house the people moving out da -da 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 -da. that's what they do they be rushing they be thirsty but i was thirsty too because i had to get away from misery so me and my aunt and one of her friends we go view the house it's people moving out it's some white people they had a white dog with them the the yard was huge when i tell you the yard was huge the yard was super super huge so i'm like yes i love this the backyard is huge the inside it was okay it wasn't all that but it was okay you could tell they wasn't like dirty people or whatever we walked through we were walking over their little lamps and stuff like that the dog said hey to us they asked us if we wanted to keep the dog and i said absolutely not you can take your dog with you so we seen the crib everything was good everything was copacetic now we goes back to the management office tell the management office hey we want the thing the management office they want to see the eviction paper so I give them the eviction paper. They say, why would he file an eviction? It's, you don't even owe no rent. This is just for possession. Exactly. So you're going to rent to me or not? They say, yes, they will rent to me. They'll call me when everything gets done. I swear to God, these people called me so fast. When I tell you these people called me super, super fast, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in there. Oh, yeah, I was hyped to get away from my aunt. So, June 30th, 2017, that's my son's birthday. Remember, I told y'all, they was in New York. They was with my mother's side of the family. They was with Troy family. They was in New York for vacation that summer, okay? So, they had just left a couple days ago. I went and picked up the key June 30th, thinking I'm cute, thinking I'm going to move in, right? Wrong. So, I get the key or whatever. I go check out the house. I go buy some roach bombs. Now, I'm from New York. So, any house that I move in, baby, before I move any furniture in, before I step foot in there, I'm going to put down a bunch of roach bombs everywhere. Because I need to make sure, do this house got roaches? Do this and that? I, I just need to make sure. Mind you, I'm not bringing in no furniture. I'm not bringing in nothing. All we bringing in is clothes and shoes. I told you I left all my furniture in Staten Island in a storage unit. That's something that's on my credit. So, okay? Not going to lie. I left everything there brand new jordans bed sneak every single thing pots pans i know they was having a field day whoever opened that storage unit it was a whole bunch of stuff a whole bunch of stuff basically clothes on my back duffel bag you know stuff that i just bought me and the kids that's all i was really moving in anyway but before i even took any of that over there i said let me go check the crib out let me go clean up and let me go put the roach bombs down you know what i'm saying so i planned on staying at my own house june 30th when i got the key and i was gonna stay to the next day and i was gonna go july 1st and go to my house so that was the plan so when i went there i started putting down roach bombs but now i'm going in the bathroom i don't know why son said go in the bathroom i was just looking around i goes in the bathroom y'all as soon as i walk in the bathroom my ankles start burning Woo! i'm going through it bitch my ankles are on fire i don't know what's going on i'm trying to figure it out so I'm like, what the hell? Like, what's going on? Mind you, I was recording on my phone. I wonder if I still got the video clip. I'm going to go back and see. But I was recording, like, the house on my phone because I just wanted to do a little house tour. Master that phone. Even though I didn't have no YouTube or nothing like that. But I still wanted to do a little house tour or whatever like that. 
So my ankles is burning. I'm patting my ankles. I'm trying to figure out what it is. I'm like, oh, these mosquitoes is crazy in the south. That's what I'm thinking. But then I started thinking, mosquitoes, well, why they not biting nowhere else? When I tell you both of my ankles was on fire, y'all, I was like, oh, my God, like my ankles, my ankles. Y'all, I runs out the house because something just was not right. So I runs out the house. I grab my phone. Y'all know exactly the thing. First thing I do, Google. Google is your best friend. So I looked up what insects, what bugs, what whatever attacks your ankles. Because I want to know what, what it was. It pulled up that it was fleas. I know you fucking lying. You know what I did? I called the management office. Hey, you gave me the keys to the house or whatever. Y'all cleaned it up real good. Y'all painted. Y'all did y'all big one. Y'all cut the grass. Y'all did y'all big one. It's looking real good. But I'm trying to figure out why is the dog house back there? Because when we went to view the house, the people who was there before, I told y'all they had a dog. And the dog was, I guess, living in the backyard inside of this dog house. And the dog house was still in there. And that's something I asked them to remove several times. I said, before I get the key, can you please remove the dog house? I I don't want it there. So I called the, the management company and I'm telling them this house is filled with fleas. They just attacked my ankles. I don't know what y'all got going on. It was never that deep. I'm going to need y'all to come do what y'all need to do. So they acting all shocked and surprised like they didn't. Oh my God, fleas. That's so crazy. Oh my God, we're going to send our maintenance man. What are you sending the maintenance man here for? What is he going to do about the fleas? Send pest control. Like, what are you doing? So, day one of getting my key, I'm already in some shit, okay? I didn't even get to sleep in there yet. Day one, I'm already in some shit. So, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell? Like, oh, my God. I can't do this. Like, this is just only day one. So, the maintenance man comes or whatever. He's not surprised about the fleas at all. He's like, oh, yeah, the last people, they had, the dog had fleas because they left the dog in the backyard. But I thought we cleared all that up. No, you ain't cleared nothing up. Walk in that bathroom and put your, your jeans up. Let them get your ankles because they got my ankles real good. My ankles on fire, sir. I'm going to need you to do something about this. I already paid the rent. Is it a way I can get a refund? Y'all can take back the paperwork? All of that. Like, all of that. Like, I was not playing. I wanted a whole refund because I, uh, listen, I ain't know how renting work. I know I rented places, but I thought you could get a refund like the stores. The, you know, I was still young at the time, 23. So I'm like, yo, so I can get a refund, get my money back, go look for another house. And they like, no, once you sign a lease, you, you stuck in that lease. Like, you tripping. So I'm like, damn, I'm like, all right. So boom. The next day or whatever, they send pest control over to the house. While they sending pest control over to the house, you know what I'm doing? I'm on the phone with another pest control because I don't trust their pest control now. So now I'm calling pest control myself. I'm like, you're, I need you to come over. It's fleas, da 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 So I guess when they pest control people came, my pest control people also came. And then a the maintenance man called me and asked me why was it another pest control thing in the yard. And I told him, like, I think your your, your way of fixing it ain't going to do nothing for me. I, I need to do it too. I need to be sure because the way my ankles were set up, maybe I had bullet holes all in the ankles. Like, I didn't know what was going on. On myself. On my, on my soul. On my life. Like, all of that happened, right? The, the, um... The flea problem was done. It was fixed. I went in there the next couple of days and it was perfectly fine. Everything was good. Now, let's start getting into the living conditions of this house. So, first of all, for the first year and a half, the house was, it was a little perfect, nice house. Everything was good. Everything was, you know what I'm saying? Everything was up to par. But then out of nowhere, we started having snakes in our kitchen. Where these snakes come from, I don't know. We started hearing things in the dishwasher. I told you, I don't use the dishwasher at all. No house I live in. That's nasty. They be still dirty. I wash my own dishes by hand. I will always do that. I don't care how pale my hands turn. That's why my hands so lighter than my face. I don't care. Hands staying in that water. Not using nobody's dishwasher. So I never even opened the dishwasher in the first place. So why does it sound like animals fighting in the dishwasher? Y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all. I ignored it. Because I wasn't trying to open the dishwasher and figure out what it was. So I ignored it and, and I minded my business. The snakes started coming up in the kitchen from under the refrigerator. Don't know where they was coming from. I don't know. Now I'm going out to cut the grass and stuff. I ain't going out cutting nothing for real. Omar really cutting it. But we going out cutting the grass and stuff. We got frogs all in our grass. We got snakes in our grass. We got lizards. We got all types of animals going on. I said, oh yeah, I'm really in the south. I'm really in the south. Like I don't know what's going on. So now 
all of a sudden the lights they start flickering all of a sudden in the crib i'm calling the, i tell you when i tell you the maintenance man lived at the crib with me the maintenance man lived at the crib with me like he might as well just took a took a seat so i told y'all it was summertime so now it's starting to get extremely hot in the house why is the air not pumping why is nothing pumping i'm putting in maintenance requests i'm calling i'm going to the office ain't nobody coming through ain't nobody trying to figure it out ain't nobody doing none of that right so all this time i called the maintenance they ain't never come out y'all why was it a stray cat this cat just kept coming to my door i didn't know where i didn't know this cat from nowhere this cat kept coming to my door in the lease estate you cannot have any animals if you have any animals you have to tell them you have to pay a fee and all of that you have to pay rent for the animal you can't have no animals i didn't have any animals this random cat just kept coming to my door coming to my door i was letting the cat come i tell you this cat was coming to my door for a month i don't know where it came from why i was attracted to my door if it used to live there prior i don't know i didn't ask the cat no questions and she sure didn't give me an answer <laughs> so i just let the cat do whatever the cat do sometimes i will feed the cat i'm not gonna lie every other you know couple of weeks when i see it come by the house i will feed the cat so it was no issue y'all do you know this maintenance man still ain't come to fix this air situation but the day he did show up which was a month later the cat was dead I don't know how the cat died. I don't know what happened, but the cat decided to come by my door and die. So he goes to the to the owners and tell the owners, oh, she got a cat. She got to pay a fine. The cat was dead. She's not supposed to have animals. Da, 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 da. So the office called me. They trying to get on me, and I'm trying to tell them that's not my cat. I don't know who cat that was. You're tripping. It's not my cat. You're bugging. So they were trying to make me pay something that I wasn't paying, and I didn't pay because it wasn't my cat, period. So now, y'all, at this time winter come along so winter come along mind you they fixed the air when it first happened like i said it took him a month to do it winter come along now we need some heat it's cold it's cold now all of a sudden our heat go out something wrong with our heat so i call the maintenance man yo it's cold we in here sleeping in coats i need something done i don't know what to do like i'm gonna need you to get up on your a game because we ain't got no heat y'all this man brings the what is these things called i think in the the 2024 version of saying it is space heater the little fan things that go around but no it was a space heater but it was like the 1900s one one day built in, in in 1700s or something it was all black and dirty and dusty and he gonna tell me to plug that in and use it for heat y'all do y'all know two days later the thing started sparking and caught on fire boy ain't no fucking way boy. and did i also tell y'all that we ain't have no fire extinguisher how is it oh you you got section eight we inspect these apartments we send out our inspectors to check these apartments but you didn't check well house you didn't check to see if it was a fire extinguisher ain't every house supposed to have a fire extinguisher like i i don't know i could be wrong i could be wrong wait do this house that i live in got a fire extinguisher now fuck no i don't know but yeah so all that happened, like I said, the thing started sparking and ba basically caught on fire, y'all. When I tell you we freezing up in this crib, we freezing up in this crib. It's to the point my kids is going to school in the morning, but at night I make them take their shower, get fully dressed in their school clothes, put on their socks, put on a sweater, get up under the blanket. When it's time for school, wake up, brush your teeth, wash your face, eat breakfast, and you already done. That's how serious it was. We was dressed up. We were dressed up. We was. He had snorkels on and all that. We had scarves, hats, and all that. It was mad cold. And I was sitting here like I thought the South was hot all year round, but boy was I wrong. So all that happened. The heat never got fixed. The heat never got fixed. I was complaining to Section Eight. I was complaining to all these people to the point where I told them at a time it was a um a two week period where I stopped paying them rent. I told them I'm not giving y'all no rent until y'all fix my heat. Like I'm not giving y'all no rent until I fix my heat. It went on for about three good months. Then they came and fixed the heat. So I wound up paying them or whatever. Of course I had to do that because I was gonna get evicted if I didn't. But I wound up paying them or whatever. Like I said, I'm I'm complaining to Section Eight. I'm telling them like yo, I I need to move. Like I can't even like I. I can't even do this like but at the same time i'm listening to my aunt misery girl your credit ain't all that you trying to build your credit while you here you know what i'm saying so you can move into something good you know what i'm saying but i'm like damn mind you they told me the eviction was gonna drop off for seven years that eviction dropped off literally a couple of months after i rented that house that this house that i'm telling you about 
So I'm like, why did it drop off? I guess because it was not for payment. It was just for possession. So it dropped off. So I was good with that. But I'm trying to build the credit up because I'm like, yeah. I think that I need to move or something because it's too many problems going on. Yeah, y'all think that was all? No, it wasn't. Let me, <laughs> let's continue. I had bought some couches, right? Because I had furnished this place real, really slow. Because this was like my first real house that I was actually furnishing for real. The ones in New York that was furnished, remember my grandmother passed it down to me. So all her furniture, it was already furnished, you know, stuff like that. The only house I really furnished for real is probably Staten Island. And that wasn't really much furnished. It was like a table, beds, you know, the, the regular stuff. So, I started furnishing up the crib. I started putting little paintings on the wall, get a kitchen table and stuff. I started making the crib real, real nice, real, real nice. You know what I'm saying? We already had our beds and TVs and all that. I started getting dresses. I started getting stuff. Because now I'm like, yeah. So now we, we probably in this crib, what, I think about a year and a half now that all of this is going on. Okay? Mind you, I told you I got the key June 30th, 2017. So, y'all, remember, 2019, I winds up getting pregnant, y'all. I winds up getting pregnant. So, like I said, we done furnished up the crib months ago everything going good everything going steady you feel what i'm saying every now and again i hear something in the dishwasher fighting i don't know what it was but i wasn't checking it i know i didn't see no mice droppings i didn't see no rats i didn't see no animals all i seen was the snakes that we used to catch all the time so boom i'm pregnant and now i'm telling myself i don't want to live here i don't want to bring a baby in this house i just i'm just not comfortable here y'all so Again, back to the furniture. Y'all, one day, I'm sitting there on the couch, and I'm hearing this little, these squeaky sounds. I don't know what this is, but I don't want to feel stupid. So, I'm like, what is this? So, I start cleaning up the living room. The living room was already clean, but I'm trying to clean it even more, because I'm trying to figure out what is what i'm hearing i'm pulling back the refrigerator i'm pulling back everything that is to pull back i don't see nothing i don't see anything so i goes i sit on the couch again now i'm real quiet i'm telling the kids hush don't talk be quiet real quick i keep hearing squeaking so omar walks in the door i'm telling omar i said omar come here real quick sit on this couch real quick and tell me what you hear so omar like what is that sound so I'm like, yeah, I already took the couch pillows off. I already took the cushions off. I already did all that. Like, I don't see nothing. Y'all, Omar tells me to get up. He said, let me check. He rips open. He takes off the pillows. He rips open the couch thing. And he's looking around. Yo, Omar jumps up. Omar say, Charisma, get up now. So I'm like, but what happened? He's like, get up now. Get up now. So I jump up. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Like, what happened? Y'all, when I tell you this nigga just took, picked the couch up like Superman and threw it in the front yard, like he literally went to the doorway, the couch right here, he walked to the doorway, throws the couch across the thing. Mind you, this is a three-seater. How's you that strong, sir? I almost called the cops. <laughs> How's you that strong? So I'm sitting there, I'm like, what the hell was going on? He like, it was just a bunch of pink baby mice up in there. No, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't know where they came from. It was like 50 of them. Oh my God. I want to throw up. I can't believe what I just seen. So I'm like, what? So now he know my phobia of animal. Uh-uh. I can't do mice. I can't do rats. I can't even look at them. I can't look at a picture of them. If I'm on Google and a rat pop up, oh my God. Like, I'm going to lose it. I can't take it. So I'm like, pink baby mice. I ain't never hear about no I ain't never hear that. Never hear that day in my life. Mind you, our house ain't dirty or nothing. This was before I even learned about field mice. I didn't even know they had field mice. All I know is that when he threw that couch out, I went into straight panic mode. I said, nope, I'm checking. Yo, we ripping up the other couch. We trying to figure out if they in there, they not in there. We doing everything. So now we deep cleaning the whole house. If anything is in a cabinet, we got to take it out. We got to put it in plastic. It can't be no boxes in the house. We got to make sure. Y'all, I found out that these field mice out here, they climb. 
They climb your walls. They on your counter. They in your cabinets. They not playing. I'm in the ghetto. They not playing. For some reason, they eat plastic bags and clothes. On my soul. On my, on my soul. On my life. Like. Yeah. So as we doing our deep cleaning, I'm taking stuff out my dresser. I'm taking everything out my dresser. The kids is helping me. We all taking everything out of our dresses. We em we basically emptying out the house. But we emptying out the house and cleaning it, wiping stuff down, seeing what's going on, seeing where the holes at, where these mice coming from, what's going on. We don't know. In the midst of us taking the stuff out of our bag, uh, out of our thing, I had a plastic bag that was inside my panty drawer, and it had like brand new panties and stuff. You know how you go to pink or whatever, you get the little bags whatever but i had took it out the pink bag and i had put it in a gray grocery bag so i know the difference i know the difference between the clean ones and you know i mean the newer ones and the older ones you know what i'm saying so yeah back to the story so we cleaning out the dress or whatever like i said i'm in my panty drawer you know what i'm saying i got the new panties from pink but i got them in a gray bag because i want to tell the difference between my panties okay i always keep my panties separate i keep the period panties over there the sexy panties there the new panties i always want to keep it in the bag because i want to know these the new ones okay boom 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 i we grab the plastic bag right so i'm like okay well i'm gonna dump the plastic bag but i'm seeing that the plastic bag got like mad holes in the bag so i'm like what the hell is this like what is going on so i take the plastic bag and i'm trying to like open it up y'all 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 oh my god my skin is crawling when i tell you it was like 15 pink little mice hold up wait a minute running bro who is the mother why is the mother over here having babies in my house who are you i never even seen you i didn't even need a mouse trap because i didn't even know i had mice y'all when i tell you these things literally came out of nowhere nothing changed in the house nothing changed in the house but the fact that we put furniture in the house when it when the living room was empty because the living room was the last thing i decorated i did all of our rooms in the bathroom and the living room was empty for at least a year because we didn't really have guests anyway you know what i'm saying so soon as i put the couches and everything in there i guess the mice had a place to sleep so they say oh i'm going in her crib Woo! i'm going through it I'm losing my mother from medulla y'all was so freaked out i said absolutely not i called the maintenance man immediately and i told them listen i don't know what y'all got going on these little mice I got, now nah, they in here eating up my clothes. All my shirts and everything had holes all in them. They eating up my clothes. I don't know what's going on. I can't stay here like this. Mind you, my lease was already done, right? I'm on a month-to-month -month lease. So I can leave whenever I get ready. Feel me? All I got to do is put in the thing with Section 8, let them know, da 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 da, -da do that. But I'm on month-to-month, -month, right? So, I'm telling the maintenance man, the maintenance man basically telling me, like, baby, you got to figure it out yourself. We can't help you with that. We don't know what to do. Those your mice, figure it out. And I'm telling him, baby, these not my mice. I came in here with the clothes on my back in a little duffel bag with a blow-up bag. I, I, I just put this furniture in here. Not even six months ago, I put this furniture in here. And already, I had to throw it out brand new. Ooh. I have to already throw it out. Like I don't, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't get it. it it's weird. So you're not gonna replace my stuff. You're not gonna. No, you're you gonna have to do it yourself. So boom, I call pest control. Yo, got some mice in here. I don't know what's going on. So the pest control man start running down what it is. He's like, those are not regular mice. Where are you from? You from New York? I can hear everything in your accent. They always tell me this when I call somewhere in the south. Oh, you from New York? Oh, baby, the mice up there is totally different. The mice up there in New York, they eat food and all that type of stuff. The mice down here, they be real thirsty. Like, so I'm like, what you mean real thirsty? Like, they be drinking? Like, what the? I was confused. But he's trying to put me on. He like, no, they need water to survive. They be real thirsty. They do eat bags. They do eat clothes. They do cl climb. They do everything. Did you check your cabinets? Did you check your food? Make sure all your food is stored in plastic. I already had all the plastic Tupperware. I already had all of that stuff already. All my seasonings in plastic bins. Like, this is why I have so many plastic bins in my house now. Because I have a bad phobia. Like, I can't. My anxiety when it comes to these animals is over the top. So, I'm sitting there. I'm like, yo. I don't know what you want me to do, sir. But, um, 
I'm gonna need y'all to come out here. I'm gonna need y'all to come out here. So, boom, pest control gets to my house a couple of days. They put this black box down. They said that this black box, as soon as the mice eat it or whatever like that, they would get dehydrated and they would just leave the house. He said, be, he was like, be, um, be careful about where you step in, especially at night if the lights is out because this this box, it will definitely, whatever's in there is going to make them die. So they will come out and they will die. Like they will just sprawl out in, on the, the um, living room floor or whatever and, they, and the few that's left will die. So I'm like, okay, cool. No problem. So after this man put the black box, mind you, I never had a roach problem at all. Never had one roach in the crib. Like I said, we did two years now. No, not one roach in the crib. Not one roach in the crib. Everything good. Not literally, not one roach. Okay? I didn't even know I had the field mice. Okay? This man puts the black box down. He tells me every all of this stuff, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And then he takes out this spray can. And he starts spraying around my windows and stuff on the inside and the outside. So I'm asking him, I said, what's that? So he said, oh, this is pesticide. You know, they just keep the pests out and stuff like that. So I'm like, but I don't have no other pests. All I have is the mice. I asked you to come fix the mouse problem. I didn't ask you to spray nothing that you spraying. Like, I don't know what that is. He's like, no, I'm just telling you this, this is going to be real good. So I'm like, okay. Y'all, a week later, roaches out the ass. Whatever that man sprayed, whatever that man sprayed, y'all, I don't know where these roaches came from. So now, a few mice is coming out, they dying. I don't have the roach problem, um, um, the mouse problem no more. So all the failed mice, they out the house. I don't have that problem no more, and I don't even have couches no more because they took that with them. Half my clothes done been ate up by them, everything. So I'm so excited. I'm like, yes, I'm like, God, no more mice, no more mice. Y'all, the roaches start going crazy bro they start going crazy this is how i found out it was roaches so boom my son he had a ps4 or whatever right the game was sitting there i goes to cut the game on the game ain't even cutting on or nothing he kept telling me the game ain't starting i said nah this supposed to start something this supposed to start so i keep cutting it on it's not working i picks up the game something just say start shaking it i start shaking it when i tell you roaches jump Y'all, when I tell you roaches dropping out, bro, yo, we didn't have any roaches for two years, bro. Not one the whole time we was living there. I knew the pest control man, whatever he sprayed, bought them things out. Bought them things out. And you know how I know that it brought them things out? I think that's how they run their business. They actually put stuff there that attracts mice and all of that. And they want them to be in your house so you can keep calling them and paying them to come handle the situation. But they know what they're doing. But I knew what he did cause the roaches. Because I told y'all, when I moved, when I lived in Staten Island, and my, my fourth day, I think I was there, I seen the big rats. In the garbage can, big rats in Staten Island, in the garbage can. And I called, the maintenance man had sent pest control there. And he had put down this stuff, this bait for the rats. I never seen another rat. But he sprayed this thing, the same thing the man sprayed here. He sprayed it under my radiator and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what it was, so I just let him spray it. He was like, oh, this so they don't come back. They always say the same thing, this so they don't come back. So once he sprayed everything from um under the radiator, radiator, I swear to God, I put the heat on the next day I woke up, it was a million roaches in the kitchen, bruh. A million roaches in the kitchen. That's how I know they did that on purpose. But before I could tell, yes, the difference is in South Carolina, when he was spraying it all of that, I didn't even see he was spraying until he did the last window. So when I asked him, I said, what are you doing? And he told me what he was doing. I explained to him the same thing I just explained to y'all about Staten Island. That stuff brings roaches wherever you're spraying. And he's praying to God. No, it don't. I'm telling you, it's going to keep everything away. Nah, it bought it there. When I tell you, after he was done, like I said, that crib was filled with roaches. That crib was filled with spiders. Spiders started coming out of nowhere. All of these weird bugs, ladybugs, all types of bugs just started coming out of nowhere. That's how I knew whatever they sprayed. Yeah. They have a follow-up call. They call me, hey, is everything good with the film mice? Is everything good in the house? I said, no, whatever you spray calls roaches. Oh, well, do you need a treatment? We could we'll be fine to come over and give you a treatment. Shut the fuck up. Nick, I don't need nothing from you. 
I'm already moving. So I put it, I went to section day, put it in the moving paper, baby. It's time for me to go. It's time for me to go. I'm not staying here. It's it, it been too much. I mind you, I'm pregnant at this time. I'm pregnant at this time. Like I said, I'm I go to section day. I'm like, yeah, I can't have my baby in that house. That house is nasty. I showed them pictures of the living conditions, the stuff that they do not come fix, the fact that the no heat. It was just bruh. Showed them it all. Long story short. I left and I moved okay so now let's get to the next house so y'all know the next house that I was living in so I moved to another house now the house that I'm currently living in now the the management group that owns this house also owned the house that I'm telling y'all about that I just moved to so I moved from the slums and then I moved somewhere else. Mind you, I wasn't even living in the slums. This house was in the middle of a rich neighborhood. And I was the only broke bitch on the block. <laughs> Everybody else was rich. White, wealthy, comfortable. And here I am in this house on the middle of the block with roaches and failed mice. I'm always going to tell the truth. You feel me? That's one thing I'm going to do. And there in my front yard telling me I can't go nowhere. Yeah, it was it was giving that. It was giving that. I'm like, I'm in a rich, right, wealthy neighborhood and all of this. So yeah. So now I moved. Mind you, I have blessing. So blessing is still a couple months old. I moved to the new company, which is the one that I'm currently renting with now. They own this old house as well. So boom. We in this house, everything is perfect, okay? The kitchen was huge. I needed that kitchen space because I knew I was going to open my body butter business that year. So I told myself this was in 2020 now. I got the key to this house February 20th, 2020. Yeah, because I had blessed February 25th. And I remember moving everything out of storage while I was pregnant. And I put it inside the new house. So, y'all, I have blessing, everything good. Now, I start decorating this crib. Now, when I say moving stuff out of storage, I don't mean I was taking the stuff that was from that roach infested house. I mean, any any of my shoes and clothes and stuff like that, that's what I put in storage. I washed, dried, bagged up, put in storage. I didn't take no furniture, no nothing big. Everything that was in there, I threw away. So, this is another house that I'm li that I was living in that I had to throw away everything, my couches, my beds, every single thing, okay? I lost out on so much stuff. So boom. Like I said, have blessing, move to the next house. Everything good, everything copacetic. I love this management company. That's why I'm back with them, but they did their big one. If I had a maintenance issue, that man was coming over. He his thing was he'll knock on the door. If you don't answer in the second knock, he's coming in with the key. He's going to fix what he need to fix and then he's going to leave again. They were so cool. I had no issues with them. The house was a newly updated house. They basically had rebuilt the house. It was so nice, y'all. So nice. Kitchen was big, spacious. I loved it. Around our house, it was surrounded by trees. We had some woods in the back. We had deer in the front yard sometimes, but it wasn't giving no rats. It wasn't giving no roaches. It wasn't getting none of that. When I first moved there, I say I put, I decorated the kitchen, the rooms and all of that. And then once I decorated the kitchen, I did see one field mice pass. So I did go get mouse traps and I caught the one field mice. I'm not going to lie. I called my maintenance man and I lied. I told him that I seen 12 mice in the house. It was all a lie. It was just one. But I told him I seen 12 in the house. He had no problem. He came that same day, put down some poison. Never seen a mouse ever again the whole time I was living there. The whole two years that I was there, I never ever seen a mouse. It was not an issue, a roach. It, everything was good. You know what I'm saying? Everything was good and everything was copacetic. On this good day one day in, 2020, in the beginning of 2022, my company decides we're not going to be in Spartanburg anywhere. We're going to Greenville. We're going to sell all of our houses in um, Spartanburg. They sell the house that I'm in. I'm going to beat your mother.
Fucking ass. Mind you, me and this landlord, we tight. Never been late on rent. Never messed up their house. They came and did house visits every month. My house was always up to par. The, they would always tell me, though, out of every house that we rent out, you got the most kids. And I, oh, that we done went in their house. And your house is the cleanest. You do your thing. Like, they always used to give me compliments. Like, oh, my God, you're such a great mother. Every time we come here, it just smells so clean. And they used to do pop-up visits, too. Sometimes they didn't even tell you they was coming. So, it's not like I had time to, oh, let me hurry up and clean. Nah, I was just OCD. All these houses with roaches and rats and mice. And, oh, I couldn't take it no more, y'all. I really wanted to change. And then I had a newborn baby. So, I, it wasn't given that. I wasn't going to go out like that. So, at this time, y'all. I started couponing real hard. Couponing real hard. I got all the soaps. Got all the tissue. I got everything. Blessing got pampers for days. So at this time, I'm getting them for free. Feel me? Because I'm using my coupons and stuff like that. So I'm living it up. Everything good. Boom, the shutdown happened. I know what happened. The panoramic happened. Everything go crazy. We in the house good. We got 15 cases of waters. We got mad tissue. We ain't got to go to the store and fight over the stuff. All the stores is empty. The racks empty. We good over there, though. We good. Everything going good, right? Boom. They decide to sell a house. They sell a house to this new company. This new company is based out of Ohio. Okay, this company kept sending me emails telling me to sign my lease and I kept asking them who are you? Nobody knows you like stop talking to me. I'm already on the lease So they then they call me and they tell me oh, do you know your landlord and them sold the house all the houses in Spartanburg? They sold it. I don't know if they told y'all that I'm sorry that they didn't give y'all the rundown But yeah, so when they did that I called my old company. I said no, I want to go with y'all Yeah, I was the best. I want to go with y'all. Please. Can I go with y'all and they was like baby if you transfer the green Bill, you could come with us, but um, I don't think yeah, Spartanburg is not it right now. I don't know what's going on with the panoramic, but um, it messed things up and we can't, you know. So they did their big one. So once they said that, I was no, I was telling them the reason why I called because I was mad at them, really. I was telling them why would y'all sell houses? Y'all didn't even write nobody no email, no text, no, you didn't even inform anybody nothing. So they said, Yes, we did. We sent the letter to the house. You should receive the letter in a few days and it'll explain everything. A couple days later, I checked the mailbox. I did receive the letter. They said, Yeah, we moving out. We going here. We doing this. This your new landlord. Da 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 da. Contacted my new landlord from there. So now, first step of me contacting my new landlord i'm trying to get everything situated i'm telling them is it gonna be the same rent same thing like what is it gonna be no we want to raise the rent at this time the rent there was 800 no we want to raise the rent to 1200 and we we don't want section 8 either girl i don't give a fuck i said all the houses that you just bought on this block all these nice brand new houses they all section 8 we all section eight on this block. So you bought all of these houses to tell us you don't even want it. So you know what they tell me? I don't even want section eight. But because you already have it, because all of y'all already have it, we have to deal with it. Because we bought the houses like that. Stop it. Get some help. Just straight bias, y'all. One day my water heater broke. I told them about it. They ain't come to five days later to fix it, y'all. Five days later. Meaning water is literally dripping in my house for five days. They company is in Ohio. I can't go to the office and punch the, the clerk in the face. I can't go drag them. I can't go do none of that. I can't do none of that. And then when you call them, you on the phone with an operator. And the operator is taking all your information. And the operator is telling you, no, they're going to call you back when they get a chance. We'll relay the message. Now, I want to speak to the supervisor. I want to speak to the owner. I want to speak to somebody. Nope, not happening. I don't know where, I don't know what happened, but um, something in my bathroom. Like the water was just coming from everywhere. I don't know what it was, but it's like the water was coming from underneath the floor, if that makes sense. And then when I would cut on the water in my kitchen, it would come out through my bathroom. When I would cut it on through my bathroom, it would come out through my kitchen. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. All I know is every morning I will wake up, my whole entire house will be flooded. I did not understand why. I kept putting in maintenance requests. Nobody was coming. I was calling in. I was emailing. They would never call back. 
they did not want Section 8 people, honestly. But why would you buy the house if you knew what you were signing up for? That's bias. That's discrimination. That's weird. I really wanted to sue them, too, because I got so much pictures and evidence. I wonder if it's too late. I wonder if it's too late. But, yeah, they did all this. Mind you, rent on time every time. No problems. House spick span clean. I got good, nice recliner couches. I try to sell them recliner couches. I was going to sell them on Facebook Marketplace when that guy tried to scam me. If y'all go all the way back to that story time. I never could sell my recliner couches. Because the water went so crazy that it ruined everything. It ruined my printer. It knocked out my Wi-Fi box. Because the water was coming down the walls at this point. I don't know what was going on in this house. But it was a water issue. Next thing you know, Spartanburg Water start calling me. How? When do when do Spartanburg Water call to my phone? They don't call people. They don't call people. They send you your bill or they cut your water off. They don't call you. So when I see Spartanburg Water, I'm like, how the hell they got my number? I'm feeling important. I pick up. They like, hey, ma'am, do you have a leak in your house? Because you're using up 1,500 things. Da, 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 and, da, 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 and I'm like, what? Huh? They like, yeah, you're using this many gallons of water. That's not humanly possible. What's going on? I say, I've been having the leak for mad long. I've been telling the landlords I don't know what happened. It literally just came out of nowhere. We would get out the shower and the floor would be wet. We would wake up and the floor would be wet. It's like it's seeping from the bottom of it. They not coming out here. I don't know what to do. Spartanburg Water sends me a water bill. The water bill was damn near. They telling me like, oh, we'll adjust your bill or whatever like that, but it's going to keep remaining high if they don't fix the problem. So, again, I'm telling them the same thing. Listen, I don't even know how I'm paying $1,500. Listen, I don't even know. Like, listen, I don't know this landlord. They trying to get in touch with the landlord. They leaving messages. They talking to the automated people as well. The Spartanburg water people, they coming out to my house every day trying to figure something out. Like, they trying to help. Nobody can help. They need the maintenance man. So, y'all, a whole month later, the maintenance man finally winds up coming. He finally winds up coming. It was a contracted maintenance man. They hired him from a whole nother company. He sent me a whole text about, oh, um, I'll be there this time. He sent a picture of his face and all types of stuff. He said he'll be there. So, he comes, looks at the house or whatever. He tells me, oh, the bathroom is a big plumbing issue in the bathroom. The water is coming from underneath the towels. We will have to rip your bathroom floor up, remove the toilet, put a new one, put the towels back. Really, nigga? I said, cool. No problem. He gets ready. Mind you, my bathroom was spectacular. Okay, before this whole water thing. Only bathroom pics I found was with people standing in it. So here. Yeah. The bathroom was spectacular. All right. That was my best thing in the house. I love that bathroom. I love taking them nice baths, looking out the window, drinking my wine. Yeah. So he comes or whatever. He gets to work. He starts ripping up my bathroom floor. He goes to Home Depot, gets a new toilet. He comes back, try to put the new toilet there. Oh, I missed the part. It's not working. I got to go get this. He tell me he'll be back the next day. The next day comes, he comes back. He comes, he puts the new toilet on, and it's not operating right. So now he's at the bottom of the floor. He's digging into the floor. He's going down to the basement. Well, the crawl space. He's figuring out what's going on there. He's telling me downstairs in the crawl space, all of the water is leaking out. He's trying to fix it, but it's a big plumbing issue. If it was a big plumbing issue, why you didn't call your colleague or whoever? Let the landlord know because I'm relaying a message to the landlord. It's a big plumbing issue. He can't fix it. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, he do all that. He tells me, listen... I'm going to figure it out. I need help with this, though. One, this is not a one-man job. I'm going to come back tomorrow. Y'all, he didn't come back tomorrow. He didn't come back tomorrow. But at this time, when I'm waiting for him to come back tomorrow, he did everything that he did. So now, we have two toilets in the bathroom. Not one of them work. The, kit, the, the, um, the sink in the bathroom, he unhooked that. We can't even wash our hands. He ripped up the floor. We have no floor. Every time I run the sink in the kitchen, where he unhooked the, the, the bathroom sink, the water is spraying through the bathroom, smacking the other wall.
I ruined about 20 of my good blankets putting it right there because every time I would cut the kitchen sink on, I would have to cook, I would have to wash the dishes, I would have to make blessing bottles, I would have to do stuff. So every time I would cut on the kitchen sink, I would try to put a bucket there. The bucket, it, it just kept overflowing. It kept overflowing, splashing, hitting the wall. It was horrible. When we had to pee, you know what we had to do? Get in the car all types of late night and go to QT to pee. I know you fucking lying. Do you know how dangerous that is? With a toddler and three kids? Do you know how dangerous that is? He comes back in four days. After I done hit up the landlord, I even threatened them. I, I'm taking y'all to court. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. All of that. He finally comes back or whatever. He puts, He installs the toilet back. Tell me he'll be back. He got to run to Home Depot for a part, y'all. This man never came back. This man never came back. So now at least we can pee and use the toilet. But you can't walk in that bathroom with your bare feet because he still ripped up the, the floor. He left all the floor in there and everything. It, it's, it's nothing. Like, we... It was disgusting. I'm telling y'all, y'all, when y'all see these pictures, y'all gonna be like, what? Yeah. He did all of that. So I hit up the landlord and I'm telling the landlord, yo, I don't have no bathroom floor. My bathroom look horrible. We can't wash our hands. I don't know what to do. I, I, I really, I don't understand. Y'all made me sign a lease a few months ago. I need to get out the lease. I need to move. This is not a safe habitat for me and my kids. I can't, we can't do this. I have a toddler. She's crawling. I don't want her to go in the bathroom. Like, this is unsafe. Like, I can't live like this. My house was never like this before y'all bought it. So why would you send your peoples to do this, that, and a third? The lady tells me during email, right? She can't answer the phone. She can't return the call, but she'll email the hell out of you. The lady tells me, oh, our office is um, located in Ohio. We sent our contracting company to come fix it. And he put in the notes that he was done around 8 last night. I said, baby, he left to go pick up a part and he never came back. I have no bathroom floor, ma'am. Like, I, had, I don't know what you want me to do. She's arguing me down, telling me, well, he said he finished it, I'm, but I'm telling you he didn't. I'm sending her the pictures and all that. She's like, oh my God, I'm going to send over my maintenance man and I'm going to see what's going on. Y'all, this is the same company I told y'all that story time when the maintenance man followed me. Yup, yup, him. She sends the maintenance man. The maintenance man comes to look at the problem. It's a whole different maintenance man. This maintenance man come. When I open the door for him, he got two little girls with him. What you bring your kids here for? Are they going to help you fix the bathroom? Is they going to put the floor back together? What, what, what do you bring the kids for? What do you bring them for? Why are they here? What's going on? Why are they here, sir? Oh, it's bring your kids to work day in, in what state? Where? Not to fix nobody's bathroom. He walks to the bathroom. His mouth dropped. Like everybody else mouth drop. You thought I was lying? This man ain't do nothing. He didn't do nothing. He didn't even know what he was doing. He was struggling. Putting the toilet on. Putting it off. Taking the old toilet on. Taking it off. But what the hell you f doing the sink? I mean the toilet and everything got to do with you unplugging my bathroom sink. So now every time I run the kitchen water is coming. Why are you playing with me sir? Like why are you playing with my livelihood sir? So yeah. All that happened. Like I said, his mouth drops open. His little girls is like, oh my God, daddy, like, oh my God. Yeah. So he's like, oh my God, um, I'm, I have to call the landlord because this is beyond my fixing. I don't know what to do. I cannot fix. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really not sure. Mind you, even though I have no bathroom, guess what? Rent was still paid on time. Because I'd be damned if I get any eviction on my name. Rent still paid on time. So I go to section eight. I say, yo, we ain't got no bathroom floor. I need an emergency inspection. Emergency inspection happens in less than three days. They don't wait the whole time. No, I need an emergency inspection. We haven't had no bathroom. We have to go to QT to pee. We have to do this. I showed him the pictures. Section 8 said, oh my God. So they sent their inspector out there. He came and looked at it. He didn't even have to do much. He looked his head in the bathroom. He said, yep. Mm-hmm. He writes a letter, writes them. He said, yo, y'all got 30 days to fix this bathroom. Y'all fix this bathroom. She moving and y'all ain't getting no more rent. The rent is stopping right here. Y'all have 30 days. Let us know when y'all fix it in 30 days and we'll do what we need to do. Do y'all think they fixed that bathroom in 30 days? No, they did not because they wanted me out. They wanted me out because I had Section 8 and they didn't want the Section 8. They wanted to raise the rent on them little ass houses that did not need to raise the rent. So at this time, y'all, 
I'm waiting on this 30 days, but I'm also looking for places. I'm looking for places because I know. I know I got to go. I know they're going to tell me I got to go because the landlord, she's not fixed. So now, at this point, I'm emailing her back now. I'm telling her all of this stuff. What's going on? What's going on? She's ignoring me. She didn't write me back. She didn't care about how my kids was. She didn't care about how the bathroom was. She didn't care about none of that. She did not care. I didn't get no response from her. None. I was telling her, y'all, I'm looking for somewhere else to live. I'm going to move soon. No response. She didn't care. She didn't care. So, 30 days come up. They tell me, yep, you can move. So, I'm like, okay. So, I, like I said, I've been looking around already. It's barely nowhere to move to. Barely nowhere to move to. So I'm sitting around, I'm panicking because now I only have the 30 days. I only have 30 additional days now to move. So now I'm panicking. I'm like, oh my God, where am I going to go? Oh my God, but I can't stay here. Oh my God, oh my God, right? So I'm like, you know what? I got to try something. So that's where Timberlake came about. That's when I had to move to Inman to that nasty apartment. Oh, baby, let me tell you that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, before I even moved, did I tell y'all that two neighbors came up to me, y'all? Two neighbors came up to me. Mind you, they bought all the houses on the block. Two neighbors came up to me, the one right next door to me and the one on the other side. So they told me basically how they're moving as well. The maintenance man don't want to come fix anything. How they've been contacting them. They have a water problem in their house. I said, you got a water problem too? She said, yeah, our bathroom. We wake up every day. Our house is flooded. We don't know what to do. And I'm like, damn. Damn, that's crazy. I thought I was the only one going through it, but I wasn't. I would see them too come out and they'll go to the to the gas station to use the bathroom. It was so ghetto, y'all. It was given so ghetto. So I was like, okay, cool. So how I get to the to the apartment? Let's talk about that nasty apartment. So boom. First of all, that apartment was a catfish, but I only had 30 days to move. I didn't know none of this. All I knew is that the lady told me. I'm going to send you the pictures of the apartment because right now someone is living in the apartment and they're in the, the process of moving out and we don't want to show it like that. So I'm going to show you the layout and pictures of how your house will be. And you tell me if you want it or not. Like I said, desperate time calls for desperate measures. I'm desperate at this point. My credit score is kind of okay. So I'm not really worried about that. I know somebody's going to rent to me, but nobody was renting. No, it wasn't a waiting list. It was like nobody was renting. Stop moving to South Carolina, y'all, because y'all taking all the cribs. So... She tells me all this. I see the pictures. I'm like, this is beautiful. Y'all, it was giving a catfish. It was giving a catfish. So I woke up in there. Y'all, y'all seen the, the video on, on this channel. If y'all go down to the um the house tour. The house tour was so nice, y'all. It was a nice sunroom. The bedrooms was big. We had two bathrooms. I loved it. It had a little bar area. Like, I really could have decorated that house so super nice, y'all. I could have decorated it so super nice. But let me tell y'all, this is the first apartment that I moved to in South Carolina. The first, the other two been houses, okay? The other two was houses. I did the apartment tour. Everything was nice. After the apartment tour, though, I started to really look around and get real deep in. So, I'm looking up at the pantry. I'm looking at the paint. And I'm glancing because I'm like, what is them dots under the paint? I'm looking, y'all, it's dead roaches. It's too much tea, bitch, for me. I'm like, oh. Under the paint. So y'all telling me when it, whoever moved out, y'all didn't do no pest control. Y'all didn't do nothing. Y'all just painted over the roaches. So now I'm freaking out low key, but still I don't see no roaches in my house. So I'm like, huh, maybe, yeah, maybe I could do something about this. So you know me, bomb the house. I don't see no roaches. Everything good. Everything copacetic, y'all. So I kept the house up. I kept the house up. I kept the house up. It was months and months and months. My cousin came and lived with me. My other cousin came. Um, my friend and them came and lived with me. Now my when my friend and them came to live with me, my friend and her kids, y'all know that story, the worst friend ever. When they came to live with me, that's when I started seeing the roaches. That's when they started coming out the vents crazy and all of that. I would too if I got a goddamn seafood boy in a closet. You're dumb as shit. That girl was dumb as hell. But yeah, that's when they started. Oh, she let her kids eat on the couch. She letting them do whatever they want. She just feeding the roaches. So that's when I started saying, oh, no, baby. Oh, no. But y'all know that apartment never had roaches. Because y'all seen I did cleaning vlogs. I did all types of vlogs. I was in there like swimwear. Like I said, whatever 
these people got in this complex, it won't be handed over to me because I'm going to make sure I keep my apartment real clean. Because let me tell you something, this, this is not a myth, but let me tell you the, you know, so in apartments, every apartment is kind of low-key connected if it's in a complex. I get that. But I done been to some places where everybody in the complex got roaches and one person do not. They do different things. So, that was one of my cousins. Okay, what's his name? Okay, so my cousin that's married. What is his name? Okay, so my cousin Sean, his wife, his her mother lived in a complex, right? That was also roach infested like crazy. But her house, not one roach. So, I called her. I'm like, yo, I need all your advice. Tell me what to put down. She told me, boric acid, do this, order this, do this. Make sure you put the things in a socket. Make sure you do this. Make sure you do that. Make sure you do that. I'm like, cool. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Y'all try doing all of that. Ain't none of that shit work. And then they were sending a pest control in in the beginning. And he was spraying that same stuff. And I kept telling him, I don't want you spraying that in my house. Because that brings roaches. And it did. It really, really did. Y'all, when I tell you it was roaches piled up in the corner. Just chilling like 20 of them at a time. Like, the house is mad clean. You don't got not one crumb. Why are they here? Why is they here? The landlord was never in the office. She act like she never worked. So everybody used to hand in their rent late, but the rent not late. If you look at the money order receipt, you have before the 5th, before you get that late fee. All of the money orders is saying way before the 5th, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd. And you tell everybody, oh, you got to pay extra because you handed in late. Now, they handed in late. It's because you haven't been in the office in two weeks. You're not answering the phone. It's, you're not even forwarding the calls to somewhere else. I don't know how the hell they let me move in there and they were so consistent answering phones and everything. And it's like I moved in there and it's like, yeah... Yeah, all these apartments, all of these buildings, and you got one dumpster. And a dumpster not even fitting. Like, all the trash is all outside of it. Now you got these animals walking around. You got these straight cats. You, Bro, you got roaches crawling up the trees in the, in the goddamn complex. You got them walking on the sidewalk like they playing football. Like, bro, it was giving mad ratchet there. It was giving mad ratchet. So, y'all know my, friend, my kids, they have friends in the complex. Feel me? So I started asking their friends questions. I'm like, yo, what you, uh, you got roaches? Like, <laughs> it was, you know, I'm trying to ease it in there. So all of them answering, they're like, yeah, this whole complex was impressive. We got mad roaches, bro. We got mad roaches. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? They were saying it like that was something good to talk about, something good to brag about. So I'm like, what you mean, who complex got roaches? He like, yeah, everybody got them. Like, they be trying to, you know, work it out with the pest control, but it don't be working. The whole complex? Yeah, even in the front office, they got some. You ain't seen them with... No. I, I didn't. How could you not see them? You see the trash right there? I love Sincere Fred Dante, bro. Dante, he was the truth because he was a kid, but he talks to you like he knew what was going on. He like, yeah, I'm telling you, like, I don't know. We ain't never had roaches. Then that lady up there moved out, and boom, we had them all. I was like... So they was never that bad. I always kept them tamed. I always kept them together. I always got them up out the crib, y'all. I was just not going down like that. I wanted to finish decorating the house. But that's why I never finished decorating that house. That's why I never really seen me put a lot of stuff in that house. Because it was too many damn roaches. And I could not tame them. But no, I didn't want to get on video and be like, y'all, I got mad roaches. <laughs> No, if you started noticing, you started noticing I was recording in my car. I was doing videos in my car all the time. I could not record in there. Soon as you record in there, roach pop up like, yeah. You good? You good? You, you good? Mind you, let's spin the block real quick. That first house, no, the second house I was telling y'all I was in. That's the house I started YouTube in. Never was roaches in that house. Never nothing. After the water thing happened and everything happened with the water, guess what? Roaches started coming. Because, you know, it's wet. It's moisture. They're coming. I'm filming a video one day. I wake up. My YouTube is blowing up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm famous. It was all a lie. Oh, yeah, I'm checking the comments. They like, girl, it's a roach in the back of you. I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. No. <laughs> like, 
my father called me. He like, oh my God, the Rosha. I'm telling my dad, I'm like, you know what? It already got like 2,000 views already. Mad people already seen it. I'm going to just leave it up there. Like, why? I mean, it's nothing high. I come from rats and roaches. You're a dummy, bitch. He like, no, you're not going to leave that up. You're not. It was in one of the Baby Daddy series. Whatever thumbnail you see that got the little roach on the thumbnail, yeah. Not the little ro the fake roach that I put on the thumbnail. But yeah, you'll see why I have to re-upload re it. My father was like, no, you're not going to embarrass me. Take that down. Take that down. And I'm sitting here telling him, like, listen, the house is clean. The house is spotless. It ain't my roach. So why can't it stay up there? Stop it. Get some help. And it came out in a perfect time when I was talking about Troy. It came, it knew he was a rogue. So I was like, eh, eh. But yeah, don't move next to no house with no trees, especially roach trees, because they get in your car in the winter and they get in your house. You don't, you don't want that. You, you don't want that. It's super hard to get them out your car. I know it took me three months to get them out my car. In that, the house, I'm telling you now, where they pulled up the bathroom. But yeah. He put up that bathroom, all of that water everywhere. Roach is going crazy. Roach is going crazy. I'm telling you, that one was in the back of the video. It's like, yeah. But only the real OG beauties know that. So I need y'all to comment. Like, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. And it wasn't no big roach. It was a baby roach. So that means where's your mother? Yeah. That's my mother. Your fave could never. <laughs> where's your parents? But yeah. So back to the slums uh, like i don't know what the hell they had going on in that apartment complex what was going on then they wanted to oh we're gonna kick you out we're gonna do this we're gonna do that because you causing too much commotion and baby half the time i'm causing all of this commotion besides me sitting there arguing with omar and telling y'all his feasting and his business in the complex because i guess i was that loud that the whole complex was like oh girl his feet is like oh like yeah you know you hear you see them little looks when you when you live in the complex because the neighbors they looking like mm, that's the boy she was talking about mm -hmm. his feet don't look that stink she with him <laughs> like you know what i'm saying they used to say little smart little slick stuff like that but i always used to go to the complex because at this time they kept changing managements over and over and over. As soon as I get in good with one management and I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. I need this work done in my house. I need that work done. They switch the management. They keep raising the rent. Keep raising the rent. Then the, the, the new people, they stop sending pest control. They will only pest control the outside of the house. Then they Wi-Fi. Let's talk about they Wi-Fi. They Wi-Fi wasn't hitting on shit. Do y'all know? For a whole eight months, I was driving from Inman to Roebuck. 25 minute ride there, 25 minute ride back to go all the way to my dad's house to upload all of my videos from YouTube on YouTube. All my story times, everything while I was living in the house, I had to go to my dad's house to upload. Huh? The Wi Fi, I guess I lived in the back, so the signal was just not giving. I didn't have no Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi, I had Wi-Fi. It said the, the signal was excellent, but every time I would try to upload, it would take like three days to upload. Who waiting three days for a video? Make it make sense. And at that time, I used to record back to back to back to back. So that's why if you notice, you go on my channel, you see I took that little hiatus when I was living in there. Because yeah, who, I'm spending mad gas money to go all the way over here. Upload a video come all the way back. It's to the point where I started just batch recording videos Editing all of them at the same time going to my dad's house for that one day and uploaded each and every one of them But it started getting tiring. It started getting draining I want to actually be able to upload from my house where I'm at I don't want to have to drive all the way over here and do all that it got too much But I still kept doing it. I still kept trying to be consistent. I still kept it going I still kept it going long story short nevertheless. I'm out of all of them environments y'all I'm out of all of them environments. And that's why I said the message that I said in the front. Everything that you do today will and can affect you tomorrow. Had I not had that little eviction for the possession or whatever on my name when I first came down here, I would have got something way better. Had I had some credit, had I knew about credit, I would have had something way better. And I don't even know why I didn't know about credit because my grandmother's credit score was like an 800. She was serious about her credit. Like, my grandmother get whatever she want, but she ain't use her credit like that. She just, I guess she knew, but she didn't teach us. So, I'm 
I'm like, what is, I get here, they talking about credit. I'm like, I don't, I don't got no credit card. How you even get a credit card? Like, I didn't even know I was eligible for a credit card. I thought they just picked random people. I didn't know nothing when I got here. I was 23 with the clothes off my back, getting off the Greyhound, bro. I didn't know nothing. I am so grateful because I learned so many things. I learned how to mother better. I learned how to do everything better. And I am super, super grateful for that because, yeah. Everything that I did in my past, it came back to bite me in the booty, okay? I thought I was running away from my problems, leaving New York, thinking everything was just going to be what it was, to get down here and rent way worse apartments. At least the ones up there, it was good. Maintenance man lived in the building with us. He come up real quick, fix whatever was to fix. Out here, it's like, I got to wait for you to drive to my location. It's not giving that. So, yeah, I've been here April this April makes seven years that I've been here. Is it six or seven? Yeah, seven years that I've been here, right? And I just named every single house that I lived in since I've been here. And we had to live in those conditions for all of these years. And this is why I took the long hiatus I took off of YouTube um, in February. Because, baby, y'all see the house that I live in now. I mean, it's not the best. But it's way better than where I was. I don't care about them great floors no more. See how I cared about them in the beginning, the little stuff? No, I'm grateful. Because he could have gave me something with some rats, some roaches. I haven't seen not one roach since I've been in a new house. Not one mouse. Not nothing. All I had to deal with really was the person living in the damn crawl space and all that. Yeah, go watch the other story time and know about that. But... I haven't had not one problem. It's so peaceful on this block. My neighbors don't mess with me. Y'all see I've been recording the story time mad long. You ain't hear nobody drive by yet. You ain't hear nobody get crazy yet. Like everything just been copacetic. And I just love that for me and my kids. So that is why I took the long hiatus off YouTube. Because I've been enjoying my house. My roach free house. I can use my bathroom. And it works. Like, I got a floor of my bathroom. I don't have 20 roaches in the corner like, you're. I don't have mad field mice eating up all my clothes. Like, I'm happy. My Wi-Fi signal is busting, bro. My Wi-Fi signal is busting, bro. I don't got to drive nowhere to upload my videos. I don't got to be uncomfortable for nobody, bro. And I'm so happy for that. I will forever be grateful for that. But what I will say, the closing remarks of this video is please, please, please stop doing what you're doing. You know what I'm talking about. Stop spending that credit card. What you doing? Your credit just turned to 750. Why is you getting a personal loan? You don't need that, sis. You know that's going to affect you in about two years, right? When you really trying to move on and do something, right? Bro, stop doing what you're doing because I'm telling you, you go going to end up looking like me with the 20 roaches like in the crib. You don't want that. You literally do not want that. When I told you, me and my kids, we went through that, bro, together all of these years and none of y'all even knew what was going on in the background. These YouTubers don't be telling y'all their business. They don't be telling y'all what's really be going on. And they will never tell y'all. But see me, I'm transparent. I'm real. I love to be real because if you're if you're going to lie about something, the, the, the fake people, the people don't like you, they're going to expose it anyway. So it's best if you just start telling the truth. So I just tell the truth about all my experiences because I really don't want y'all to run into the same experience that I ran into. And if y'all do happen to run into them, I want y'all to know how to handle it or how to go about it. But yeah, all of this situation, I, I couldn't do anything about it. Like, I made my bed. I had to lay in it. I came from Staten Island. Record wasn't all of that good. I got put in all of the bottom of the barrels, houses. The second house was good. Second house was great. But once they sold it, yeah, it just wasn't given that. But the only good thing that I'm grateful is that the people who sold that house, I'm now renting with them again. And I love them. I love them. I love them. When I call for maintenance, they answer the phone. They let me know what's going on. Everything is 
communication is good and they gave me a big big super discount on my security deposit y'all my security deposit was 1200 to get here they gave me a super discount and i will forever be grateful for them you know that y'all seen the vlog they wrote my name on the side welcome home charisma even though i'm renting but this is a good experience for me because is this how it be when people actually buy a house though they write your name on it, give you the big key, you take the photo smiling. Like, that has been, has been my only goal since I've been here, was to get a house. That has been my only goal, buying me a house so I don't have to deal with this stuff. They say buying a house is even more money, is more stressful. If the roof came in, you got to fix it yourself. I want to be prepared and ready for all of that. I want passive income. I want so much things, and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Hopefully, this is my year. Hopefully, this is my year where I hit my 100K on YouTube. I know it's possible. Simone did it. And I, this is why, see, I look up to people like Simone. You know what I'm saying? Not because of the subscribers that she have on YouTube, but it's because we in the same niche. We both do story times. If you could reach 100K, we all can reach 100K. See, the issue is with Simone, people be looking at Simone videos and they be like, how is she telling this and she getting this amount and I'm not getting this? Simone put in her work, y'all. Simone put in her work, bruh. I found Simone when she was at 50K. And she been consistent since I found her. And that was two, three years ago. She been consistent since I found her. She don't play. YouTube don't like when you inconsistent. When you post a video once a month, when you go missing for two weeks, they don't like that. That's why they're, they're not pushing out my videos how they should be. They're not really recommending this to people how it should be. That's why the post notifications ain't how it should be. Because, yeah, YouTube don't like that. You play with them, they're going to play with you. That's the end of this video. If y'all like this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you follow all of my social medias. And up until then, peace.